and Mercy, and this is the place where we try to answer all your science-related questions. It's the one-stop science shop. Let's see who is sending the question today. It's Joe from the Philippines. Her question is, why do I look so much like my sister? We're not even twins and we're almost identical. Sorry, Joe. That means you never get to make fun of her looks. Blame it all on genetics, the science of inheritance. Genetics is the study of genes, heredity, and genetic variation in living organisms. It is a part of biology but also involves studying many of the life sciences. The reason why Jo is so similar to her sister is because they share the same DNA inherited from their parents. DNA is the molecule that carries most of the genetic instructions used in the development, functioning and reproduction of all known living organisms. It is present in the nucleus of our cells and decides characteristics such as our hair type, skin type and so on. Would you like to find out how to extract your own DNA at home? I've got a great experiment to show you how. For that, you need some rubbing alcohol, water, liquid soap, salt, some empty glasses, a spoon and measuring cups. First of all, I'm going to make the salt solution with a tablespoon of salt and 500 ml of water, which I've already measured out. Stir it until it completely dissolves. This may take a couple of seconds. I'm going to scoop up half a cup of water into a separate glass and gargle it for a minute. That was a long minute. This glass with my gargle water contains my chick cells. The next step is to add two drops of dishwashing liquid. Now stir it gently to avoid bubbles. In the next step, I'm going to measure out 100 ml of rubbing alcohol. Let me grab my tray in case it gets messy. Now. I'm going to gently pour the rubbing alcohol into this. Now we have to wait for three minutes for this to settle completely. And if you have done it correctly, you will see your strand of DNA is appearing here. Did you see that? That's my DNA right there. Pretty, isn't it? Now let me explain what happened here. The salt water extracted chick cells from my mouth. I used liquid detergent as they break open cells by destroying the fatty membrane that encloses them. This releases the cell contents, including DNA, into the solution. This is such a fun experiment. I know you want to try it at home. This is what you need. Rubbing alcohol, salt, glasses, spoon, liquid soap, measuring cup, and water. That was an interesting experiment, but my cheeks still hurt. I think we have a visitor. Let's see who's coming by. Wow, what an amazing place. Hi. Hi. I'm Mercy. Come on in. Welcome to the One Stop Science Shop. What's your name? My name is Sharon. Hi, Sharon. What class are you in? I'm in fifth class. What brings you here today? I have an assignment on Joe Hinchio and his discoveries. I've heard he was the first person to find the exact number of chromosomes in the human body. Yes, you heard right. And he was a great experimentalist too. Let's have a look at his story. This is Joe Hintijo, an Indonesian-born American cytogeneticist. Cytogenetics sounds impressive, and it means the study of the structure and function of the cell, especially the chromosomes, which function as the agents of heredity. Hintijo was the scientist credited with discovering the correct number of chromosomes in our human cells. He was born in November 1919 in Java. Growing up, he learned to speak French, German, Dutch, and English. 
His father was a professional portrait photographer and Joe used to help him as an assistant. In 1940, aged 21, he completed his degree in agriculture and became deeply involved in breeding potatoes, trying to create a hybrid that was resistant to common diseases. A few years after the war, he went to Europe to continue his studies on plants. He also visited the Institute of Genetics in Lund, Sweden every summer, where he investigated the behavior of chromosomes and genes in human cells, seeing how they affect heredity and variation. In 1956, he was the first person to recognize that the normal number of human chromosomes was actually 46 and not 48 as previously thought. Observing human chromosomes under the microscope has always been more difficult than observing those of other species. Dr. Ticcio used an advanced technique to separate chromosomes of embryonic lung tissue on glass lights and to his own amazement saw that the actual figure was 46 in each human body cell. After his astounding discovery, chromosomal disorders were understood in a much better way. For example, in 1959, it was discovered that people afflicted with Down syndrome have an additional chromosome in their cells. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy presented him with an Outstanding Achievement Award. Incidentally, 62 is the amount of chromosomes in a giraffe. The number was just an incidental finding, he said. But as a result of Joe Hentigio's discovery, we now know that we have two more chromosomes than a dolphin, but two less than a gorilla, and strangely, also the potato. That was helpful. But what difference does it make to find the exact number of chromosomes in the body? His discovery led to further study into chromosome abnormalities. My teacher also told me that chromosomes determine one's gender. Absolutely. The male body has XY chromosomes, while the female body has X and X chromosomes. You mean chromosomes are made out of DNA? Yes, they are. And that gives me an idea for an activity. Let's see what we've got in our one-stop science box. Wow. Come on, have a look. We've got blue beets. OK. Orange beets. Orange beets, all right. Yellow beads, red beads, brown beads, and green beads. Six different kinds of beads? Yes. All right. And now we've got two kinds of pipe cleaners. Mm-hmm. One orange and one black. Okay. And we got rulers and scissors. Let me get this out of the way. Let's organize our beads a little and make a double helix DNA strand. Let's use the black pipe cleaner for the rungs of the DNA strand. So we'll cut out five centimeters each, eight pieces of them, okay? Okay. One. We need eight of this. Be careful not to cut yourself. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is the hereditary material in humans and almost all other organisms. Each chromosome is made up of DNA tightly coiled many times around proteins called histones that support its structure. DNA contains all the genetic information of a human body. Now we're going to use two of those orange pipe cleaners as the DNA strands. We're going to beat them with two different colors blue and yellow, blue on top and yellow, can you put that? Eight, right? Yes, eight. Let's make sure that we keep a distance of four centimeters between each pair of beads so that we have enough space for the rungs. Yeah, we're good. So now we have to make the rungs for our DNA strands. So this time we'll make two pairs, orange and red together, and green and brown together. So when we put the rungs on the strand, remember that the rung has to come between the two beads, the yellow and the blue, and we go in an order of alternates. So if the beads are green and brown here, the mm -hmm. next one comes as... Red and orange. Right, and after that we'll take another brown, brown and, and green. green, but in alternate order, right? Let's put that together. 
bend the wire on one strand between the two beads. And then now four centimeters apart, and then the next one. And so the next one would be brown and green. Brown and green. On a DNA, the proteins are always present in matching pairs. DNA bases pair up with each other, A with T and C with G, to form units called base pairs. A, C, T, and G stands for adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine. Each base is also attached to a sugar molecule and a phosphate molecule. Together, a base, sugar, and phosphate are called a nucleotide. Nucleotides are arranged in two long strands that form a spiral called the double helix. And there we have it. That's the last one. Right. And there we go. That's our double helix DNA strand. If you want to make yours at home, here's what you need. Beads in six colors, ruler, pipe cleaners in two colors, and scissors. This is your souvenir, Sharon. Thank you. I'll show these to my friends now. I'm so glad you came by. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. See you next time on the One Stop Science Shop.